Who's ready for a shoe review? How about it? I've been running more than I ever have in my life last few years and have put some particular mileage on the on running Cloud Stratus and a couple of their models. One that I'm particularly a fan of that I was gonna share with you guys today. I would definitely say this is more of my road shoe or maybe slightly, you know, off-road trail shoe, but if it's chunky, rooty, rocky, I reach for something different. This shoe for sure is what I take to the gym if I'm hitting treadmill miles or just doing long stuff around town, cutting through grass, doing things like that. All right, we're in River Arts District. Western North Carolina here in Asheville, the uh, crunchiest granola town, probably on the East Coast. It is our Southern Portland, if you will. Will you? Anyways, figured we get down to the nitty gritty of this shoe. So what are some things I wanna talk about? Features of the shoe, comfort, durability, highlights, and then a couple other things I think are important when it comes to running. Here we go, let's dive in. French Broad River right here, coming right through downtown Asheville. Wonder why they call it the River Arts District. And I'm doing this run sort of as an exploratory run. Sorry about the wind. Just to learn more about Asheville. And uh, there are studios, like metal fabricators, all styles ceramics. I mean, it's a very, very creative district. So it's really neat. And it really shows through on the buildings. So much muralism and it's beautiful. Provided this is maybe a, an area of growth. So there's a little, maybe a little less development in terms of parking, but even though there's a train nearby, it doesn't look that rough. In fact, real busy and there's just so much going on. A lot of restaurants, really good coffee joints, a couple of food trucks. So chop chop. Man, life is strong too. We're on the greenway still, so you still may hear some cars parking and still running by, but that's the nature of the trail. Also, Coop's snoring again after our walk today, so you'll hear that. All right, this is my third pair of Cloud Flyers. I do happen to like them quite a bit, and I'm rocking Men's 9 which is, I guess, pretty unique to me when it comes to running. I wear eight and a half and a lot of other stuff like mountain bike shoes and my kick around boots like Blundstones. But let's talk about what I like on this shoe. It is fairly cushiony. I mean, it does have good impact absorption. As you can see with these little uh, sort of windows throughout, it's hard to get it in focus there. Yeah, it does impact, I mean, does tolerate a lot of impact absorption. I will say that's a great thing. It also reduces weight, so you get good shock absorption. The four foot strike, which is how I run when it comes to impact. But over time, that's also the weak point. That's what I find is the first area that wears out. It also helps with how light it is i never feel like it's very hard to kick this around when i'm doing long runs the last thing that i feel is like fatigue in the hip flexor from trying to keep running or just anything throughout the lower extremity i do like that in this shoe like some some highlights for me just the feel of this shoe this um it's like a hard plastic heel stirrup it does keep your forward in the shoe i appreciate that like it's not real flimsy back here it does tolerate some bending up front, but it's not just gonna taco over real easily. It's still got some pretty solid structure to it. These laces have sort of like a hollow feel to them. They sort of feel like a straw. So when you tie them and you pinch them, they've got a little recoil, so they tend to hold really well. So I don't have to tie them really tight. Just once you get them sort of around the high point of the ankle, they just feel really good and it's not like it's too much or cutting off circulation of the foot. I do happen to like that. I don't tie my shoes seriously tight. Uh, I'm assume like most people, I get a little bit of swelling. I already have a wide foot, so I appreciate a fairly wide toe box up front. Uh, that happens to feel the best for me. I, I don't operate as well. And historically, I've, I've gotten some hot spots in other shoes, like Brook, at least the Brooks Roadrunner, as well as uh, Solomon Trail Runners, but this shoe's been really good. And I will say, this is definitely more of a road-based runner. The tread's not really aggressive. These lugs are are pretty blocky and big. The lugs, that's, that's a fine thing. Plenty of cushion here. Um, 
But as I was saying, one thing that I don't love is when I'm on mixed terrain, going from road to gravel, crossing sidewalks or grassy areas. A lot of times when you come back out of that, you will see gravel throughout this tunnel in the middle of the foot. It's a way that they really reduce the weight of the shoe, which is amazing. That's why so many people love these is they're just fantastic shoes. They're lightweight, durable. But man, I always will find that if I'm starting to feel something in the bottom of my foot, I have a large rock wedge in some of this tunnel. I have to stop, pull it out, because it'll just keep hitting the bottom of the foot, the, however you strike the ground on each step, and that becomes a bit of a pain for me. That said, you know, you could do some light running if it's consistent terrain. You could definitely take this on some grassy trail or like just basic trail. Probably nothing too chunky when it comes to rock and root. I just don't think you'd have the traction you would want. This isn't very aggressive. It's more based off of contact surface area. So it's really fine and consistent tread. So you're really gunning to grip the pavement. Probably not like mixed terrain leaf. I have loved that. The insole I find is actually pretty solid as well. Um, sort of a two-toner here. Uh, I do like that. This one's a little more breathable um, than the back end, which is fantastic. I'd rather have a little more cushion breathability ventilation here. Um, around the forefoot, big toe is where I get most of my hot spots and if I am gonna blister. So I do appreciate that. I do happen to like their insoles fairly well. I mean, I have run in the rain with these and I didn't mind drying it out. I mean, I was able to turn the heater on, put this right in front of the heater, which is in my passenger seat pedestal. And I had these things dried out easily within a couple hours. I'm surprised. Every time I've previously got a shoe wet, I feel like it's wet for days. So, you know, versus just not having an oven to put them in and actually dry them out uh, effectively, this is worked great. So generally a great shoe. Um, and the point of weakness that I found with these is this middle lug. Like I said, there is a hole, so you can see all the way through that. Probably see some light. I'll try to get there through. Yeah, I can see through it. So this middle lug is what ends up getting compressed by the end of this shoe's life with me. I probably log more treadmill miles, a majority of people, because I run as a warm up for um, almost all of my workouts, you know, one to two miles. Sometimes when I'm froggy, I'll do a three mile run every workout. It's not the best thing for a warm up trying to have, you know, specific training goals. I just love getting on the treadmill and I know if I can knock that cardio out, generally happier than I did that and then I can continue to just go, go on and get toasted with the rest of my workout. I just did a 40 minute run. I'd say it was, I probably did four miles, but it was also leisurely and I was just exploring here in uh, the River Arch District here in Asheville. So it wasn't any speed record. I have this shoe and I noticed the life is starting to get to its end point. Pretty much press through this middle lug and then hand in the shoe. And it is, the distance is significantly reduced. So I can tell every time I'm running, I am getting just really close to the ground. This foam has probably meet, uh, like reached a max compression. So at that rate, I know this is probably on its way to, to being near the end of its life. That said, I, the shoes, I think typically the tread is still very visible near the end of its life, which I'm always impressed with. So I retire them earlier than I think I have to but I'm normally getting 250 to 300 miles on the shoe. And, and that said, um, if my feet are getting sore after bigger runs, particularly stuff that I notice outside, not on the treadmill, that's when I start thinking about retiring the shoe. I do have an affiliate link with On at this point. So stoked to work with them. I continue to order their shoes. This is just my road pair right now and I just retired some trail shoes. So I am gonna start testing a new generation of trail shoes that look amazing. We've got waterproof options. I think it'd be a really good travel shoe because you could log road miles if you wanted. You could hit the trail for hike, trail run. Uh, it's a little more versatile and with the colorways they're offering, they are pretty streamlined. I mean, it's, it's a good looking shoe. By any means you know your fashionista footwear boot or anything like that it'll at least get you a sort of town uh, town worthy after the trail so that's good anyways thanks for listening check it out use the link below and you'll get a discount on your shoes when you order as well and if you see me out if you see the van you see me and coop say what's up grab me and let's go for a run Push.